Welcome back. <clears throat> this is Mr. Hassan's Maths channel and I'm going to be answering now question number two from the International A-Level Pure Mathematics P2 June-October 2020 paper and this question here is about um, the trapezium rule. So part A tells us to complete the table given the values or giving the values of y to three decimal places and we have the equation y equals 2 to the power of x divided by the square root of 5x squared plus 3. So we have to substitute inside this equation uh, the values of x that are given here. So basically um, we just simply have to just take our calculator and substitute those values into here. So we have 2 to the power of 0 which is going to be 1. I'll just put it in because can just replace with what I need 2 to the power of 0 over the square root of 5 times and I'll put 0 to the power of 2 I know that's 0 but I'm just getting it ready for the other values as well plus 3 uh, whoops I need to keep that under the square root that squared and then plus 3 okay it's one of the square root that's fine so that should give me the we, we, we know the answer should be basically um, 1 over the square root of 3 so it becomes 0 yeah 1 over root 3 it should be so, so uh, which is root 3 over 3 and you have to give the answer to three decimal places so I have to press the um, third to decimal button, S to D button, and then write it to three decimal places, which is 0 0.577. That's 0 0.577. And then I've got to do the same thing with 0 0.5. So everywhere where I put X, which was in this place and that place, where the zeros are, I have to replace them with 0 0.5. That's 0 0.5 there. And 0 0.5 there. And that gives me 0 0.6 eight six to three decimal places zero point six eight five nine gives me zero point six eight six to three decimal places zero point six eight six so there's the answer to part a and it says use the trapezium rule with all the values of y from the completed table to find an approximate value of the integral of this same expression for y this is, just check it's exactly the same it is okay uh, between zero point five and minus uh, 0 0.25 so basically the trapezium rule is where you um, take your function okay whatever it looks like we don't really not that easy to picture what it looks like and you basically find the um, area under the curve between the values given whoops between the values given. So we got from zero point minus zero point two five. I'm just uh, we don't have to do this. I'm just illustrating to you what's going on. So zero point seven five. And you can see that it's like that's point two five and then there's another point two five and there's another point two five and then there's another point two five. So you can see like we're basically uh, the width of each of these um, or the distance between all, each of the x values is 0 0.25 so basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be making a series of um, trapeziums okay um, there'll be one trapezium that's up to 0 0.462 and the next one will be up to 0 0.56577 and the next one 0 0.653 and the next one, 0 0.686, you can see it's getting kind of bigger. And the last one, 0 0.698. So it's, it's definitely going upwards like this, as this type of shape. OK, so that's just a, a little sketch. It's not accurate, of course, of what this looks like. Okay, of course, these, these widths have to be equal widths between each of these. Okay, so here we have, okay, the trapeziums. 
okay, that we're going to form. All right. So again, as I said, we don't actually have to draw this. I'm just trying to illustrate to you what's what the trapezium rule is. So basically, what we can see here is that you have a series of what are kind of like trapeziums, which kind of replicate the area under the curve. It's not going to be exactly the same because there's going to be a curve here. Well, this is a straight line. Okay, so the curve the curve we've got is going is basically going up like this, and we're forming trapeziums which will be straight lines. So what we're going to get is basically a slightly overestimate of the area if we think about this. But each of these trapeziums has a width of 0 0.25. As we can see, the width of the trapezium is the distance between each of the x values, which are all equal distances. They should be when you set up a trapezium rule. And we know that the area of one trapezium is equal to the distance between the parallel sides, which is called h, over 2, times the sum of the parallel sides. Okay, so basically, um, the distance between the parallel sides in this, in this particular case, if you've got a trapezium, that's uh, going like this. And in this case, our, our parallel sides are the the, the y uh, coordinates. Okay, so it's the distance between them is like this distance between the x values, which this is your h, and this is your a and your b. Okay, and that's the area of one trapezium. Now, we've got here one, two, three, four trapeziums. Okay, so uh, if we add together the, each of these trapeziums, the area is going to be the distance between the parallel sides, which is 0 0.25, divided by 2, times the sum of the parallel sides. So you've got to, basically, um, you're going to have this plus this. And then you're going to have this plus that. And you're going to have this plus that, and this plus that. So the first and the last will only be used once. Okay, because the area of this trapezium will be the distance between the parallel sides divided by 2, times this plus that. The first plus the second um, length. And then for the next trapezium, it's going to be 0 0.25 divided by 2 times this height plus that height. And then for the third one, this height plus that height. And for the fourth one, this height plus this height plus that height. So you can see that these this is used in both this trapezium and that trapezium. This is used in both these two trapeziums. And this is used in both these two trapeziums. But the first and the last um, y values are only used in the first and the last trapezium. So therefore, uh, we can take the first height. Now, this, 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 this height is the y value for that value of x. So that's 0 0.462. So you're going to have 0 0.462. And the last one is 0 0.698, which is this one. And as I said, the rest of them, these three are used twice. So you have two times, and you're going to have the sum of those three, which is 0 0.577 plus 0 0.653 plus 0 0.686 and that will give us the area of this under this curve or approximate the area under this curve for us so we just stick this all in our calculator and we get our answer so we have 0 0.25 divided by 2 multiplied by and you're going to have 0 0.462, just be careful when you enter everything in your calculator that you don't make a mistake, plus 0 0.698, okay, plus 2 times, and I'll open a new bracket, a 0 0.577, plus 0 0.653, and plus 0 0.6886. Close that first bracket, close that second bracket. Just make sure, yes, that's correct. And that equals, and that's 78 over 125. Um, 78 over 125, which gives us, we've got to give it in decimals, 0 0.624, 0 0.624 units squared. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this question doesn't actually tell us or ask us, but sometimes they do say, is your answer an overestimate or an underestimate? And we can see that for the X values we've got, the Y values are increasing, so it's kind of going like this. 
you can see it's kind of curving upwards okay it's not really going that way it's, it's kind of increasing so in this particular case I would say it's an overestimate okay so that's how you could I mean normally they would ask that question if they gave you the shape of the curve to be honest it might not actually um, be exactly that shape we would have to plot it to see which we're not required to do so if they gave you the actual shape of the curve sometimes they give you the uh, a sketch of the curve then you could say for sure if it's an overestimate uh, or underestimate okay so there's an answer to part two question number two and that's complete other questions to do with the trapezium rule can be found in this playlist over here other questions to do with this uh, or um, from this paper from this October 2000 and 20 paper can be found in this playlist over here you can subscribe to the channel from here and on the top you can find a card taking you to another um, paper to do with p2 uh, the trapezium rule questions that i've seen previously in the new p2 syllabus are slightly uh, more complicated than this especially the part b they normally give you some sort of variation of the expression uh, not exactly the same expression you, you like part c would be here you know, using your answer, or say hence, find the uh, area under the curve, and then they would give you something that's kind of very similar to this, but some sort of, you know, um, some some changes taking place, and you have to kind of express express this what they give you in terms of what you had before, what you had here, and then use your answer to work out the new area. But that they didn't give the question like that this time. Um, in every other paper I think they have so that's something you should be aware of go back to if you go to the playlist that I put here about the trapezium rule um, you will find questions like what I've just mentioned in that playlist okay thank you for watching and um, see you soon